So questions have come up in the discussion about my video commenting on Jordan Peterson's discussion about why God did not end slavery long ago in the Bible, in the book of Deuteronomy. Now, long ago in the ancient times, Israel had just come out of Egypt. Uh, there were probably about two to four million people. They had no government. They had no laws. And so God created basic civil laws for them, some building code stuff, some health code stuff. And that is what the book of Deuteronomy is. Now, when Jesus died on the cross, came back, Peter had a vision, and pretty much the Deuteronomical law uh, expired, in a sense. In in many cases, well, we might learn some wisdom from it. it it's it, It's interesting, but we are not obligated to live under that today. I don't even believe Israel is obligated to live under that today. Uh, as, as, a, as a nation. Anyhow, but the, in Deuteronomy, God makes certain laws governing ownership of slaves as property. And so the question arises when we're talking about whether or not there is a God and whether or not the Christian God is a self-contradiction. You know, the, the, does Christianity contradict itself? Is that a ridiculous worldview? This question comes up. Why would this good God who wants release to the captives, he wants uh, freedom from slavery. We see that in Luke 4.18. We see that throughout the New Testament. Um, we, a reference to Isaiah 62. Why would this God make laws governing slavery in the Old Testament, in Deuteronomy? I think the core issue for this, com for, for me, really is going to come down to forbearance and long suffering. But First, I've got to say, this topic has volumes and volumes and rows and rows filling entire libraries with this topic. People have tried to address this who are far more educated than you or I or anyone else, arguing from many different sides of this issue. And we're not going to solve it here in this little video, but I am going to tell you what I think. And the comments just aren't enough for me to say it all. Uh, so I, I offered to a video of one of the guys and he's like, I, I don't do videos. I'm like, okay, that's, that's cool. Well, I do. I'm, I'm a YouTuber. Kind of. Little baby YouTuber. So I'm, I'm sharing this to put forth my opinion. And I don't want to prove someone wrong and make someone feel bad. That, that's not my goal. I'm simply explaining why I don't see the contradiction and why I think it's a beneficial worldview. I am only defending the position that I'm not crazy and I'm allowed to have my opinion. Uh, I'm not going to say that someone else has to be crazy for disagreeing with me, and I don't think that anyone else should say that about me. So, but but there's an explanation that's owed for this. Why would a God that doesn't like slavery make laws that govern it? And the big question comes down to understanding how to be patient with people that learn, and then also understanding how ridiculously messed up our world is, how deep the mess really goes. It's very easy for us to stand in the perspective of the future and then look at the people in the past who didn't know what we know now, who haven't learned the morals and values that we've all learned now, and to tell them that they were wrong and stupid for what they did. If God had said, oh, can't have any slaves ever, it kind of maybe would have made a mess somewhat like the Khaleesi made in Game of Thrones when she just walked in and slaughtered all the slave masters? She, she abandoned slavery so quickly, but slavery was woven into their societies. She did more damage than good because it wasn't handled in a transitional way. And George R. R. Martin illustrated that. I, I, in, in, in so many words, one of the best example defenses of why God should have done what he did in Deuteronomy it, to allow slaves and to govern it, not just leave it up to local mob bosses to, to, to govern slavery, but to create a, a lawful system to govern th the uh, unfortunately necessary evil system at the time. That That's Game of Thrones. What happened when, um, when the Targaryen came in and abolished slavery? too fast. Peter explained this in the New Testament, that God is not slow as some count slowness, but he is patient toward us, wanting none to perish, but that all would come to repentance. And 
we we look back at the times even since Abraham 4000 years ago that's about 2200 BC up until now in these 4000 years things have gotten a lot better and slavery has been pretty much abolished throughout the world and and one of the guys commenting uh is, is on, on on this video that I'm responding to has said that technology has helped a lot and I I like I really agree technology is a big deal in providing justice to society we need to know medicine we need pro progress in science Abraham or excuse me Abraham um uh, Lincoln and Washington um George Washington it's, it's been a long day George Washington said in his Thanksgiving address uh, that, that science was important. We need science. We need to discover things. It improves the quality of life and provides justice for people. So look at the societies where they had those scientific breakthroughs. Look at the societies where slavery was ended first. L look at the societies where it's all that technology comes from. Look at, the, look at the countries that China demands its forced technology transfers. To what degree are the societies that have the greater technology saturated with knowledge about the Bible? Now, I'm not going to I'm not going to draw big conclusions from that, but I'm going to say this: it's it's one thing to try to argue that the Bible is what gave us such a wonderful just society, so we had technology. That that's one argument that could be difficult, but it's nearly impossible to argue that the Bible did not have some sort of a positive effect helping those societies that had the advanced technology that did end slavery. America had a civil war to end slavery. And the North was one of the first places where we didn't have slavery. The pilgrims landed on Plymouth Rock where they did not have slaves. The slaves were in the South where the pilgrims didn't land. So, no, Plymouth Rock landed on slavery and eventually ended it. And it was in the South that there was a lot of evil going on under the old British Empire. The slavery in America came from, God love them, Henry William, love you guys. But we all come from a broken past, myself included. And that evil that caused slavery in America was the same evil that the pilgrims who accidentally had to land in the North were trying to get away from. And bringing the Bible was their way to do it. So... I don't see God as saying, oh, there aren't any slaves. Let's create it. Although the critique about God, why didn't God end slavery? Sounds to me like they're hanging slavery around God's neck as if he invented it in a world that had none. No, no, no. It was already everywhere. He just wanted the mob bosses to not be running it how they wanted from day to day, making new policies all the time. He wanted there to be lawfulness. And look what happened. In those countries that had the Bible, we have the technology, and slavery has gone away. Look at the results and understand patience and long-suffering. I, I, I've been an ESL teacher, and many times I'm dealing with students in Taiwan, in all kinds of different situations. They make so many mistakes. I cannot stop and correct every single English mistake that an ESL student makes. I, I can't do it. There's no way. They make too many of them. I have to pick and choose and focus on the important ESL issues to, to slowly move their English up to a level where they're able to function or you know, pass a test or be able to function in a society or have a certain job or whatever. So you can't teach everything all at once. And the Bible itself, you know, what, what does God think? Why would God do this? What's God's defense of himself? Well, in the Old Testament, Isaiah, Jeremiah, God tells a prophet to go down to the potter's house. God is like the potter and we are like the clay. And one thing about clay is that if you work the clay too much, when, when you're at the, at the wheel, when you're spinning a, a pot, if you move the clay too much, the clay will quit. It, it stops working. It doesn't hold its form. The only solution is to dry it, grind it, and, and reconstitute it with water all over again. You have to start all over again. And we humans are much like that. If you try to work someone or, or change someone too much too fast, they give up and you can't get any, you can't get any progress at all. So when I hear people say, and I read people say things like, well, it's so simple. 
just make a law. Oh, okay. So you've got the solution to world hunger. Is that a simple solution too? I mean, if you know so much, then the UN should call you and end it like that because you've got all this brilliant and genius ideas that nobody else has figured out. I, I don't say that to be sarcastic, but that logically, that's the conclusion if we're going to say that it's so simple and God should have just outlawed slavery and that would have ended the problems in the world. It wouldn't have ended the problems in the world. It's far too deep. And as Game of Thrones illustrated, it probably would have made things worse because that's how evil the system is. And it's a miracle that we're in a world today where they don't have slavery. I mean, if, if, if we told the people in the ancient world that there wouldn't be slavery in 4,000 years, they would not have been able to imagine that. It, it, it'd, be, it'd be like the, trying to explain the Jetsons to the Flintstones. They, they would not have gotten it. So I, I really think when, when I, I look at these statements, like, it's so simple, just quickly end it. I'm going, that sounds like a person that doesn't understand the necessary patience that a teacher has to have with the students that are making so many mistakes. The teacher has to overlook all but a few of them so the student is able to survive and learn what's important to learn for the day. And if teachers have that forbearance and they know what to overlook and they know what to focus on, then K through 12, given those 13 years, the students grow up to be pretty smart and, and able to, to manage their own lives. And that's what the goal is. It's taken 4,000 years, but look where we are. 